our third speaker, also a very prominent individual, Dr. Falka. He uh, is at Texas A&M Temple. He has a very distinguished CV, similar to Dr. Willerson. His training includes a bachelor's degree from Haverford, master's from Oxford University, his MD from the University of Pennsylvania. Also has a PhD in biochemistry, which he obtained from George Washington University. He has served at, as a professor at various institutions, inclusive of Penn, University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey, Jefferson Medical College, and Hahnemann. He uh, took his position at Texas A&M in calendar year 2008 up in Temple. And he will be speaking to us about utilization of adult stem cells to treat patients in Texas. Dr. Prokop. So, as people said, it's a privilege to be part of the symposium here, to feel the enthusiasm, and really, I think, the very realistic thinking about the future of stem cells in this state and the country as a whole. Uh, I'm just going to be touching on things people have already touched on, and I'm going to work you through some of our data, which um, I hope you can appreciate, even though you would be kind of a presentation you may not understand immediately. To kind of convey to you the amazing things we're seeing in the laboratory in terms of we're doing terrible things really to uh, mice and rats. We give them stem cells and they get better. They get better in dramatic ways, which are hard to believe the first time around. We repeat the experiment three, four, five times, it's there. And the big lesson from this is it has an implication for the kinds of disease we were talking about here. So we're going to try to run through a few of our results on that. So, um, first of all, we're uh, the Institute for Veterinary Medicine at the Temple. Founded a little over two years ago with contributions from Texas A&M Health Science Center and College of Medicine, Scott White Health Care System, and, as mentioned before, the Governor's Emergency Technology Fund. Extremely important. We're a uh, wonderful facilities there on the West Campus. Research lab is about 3,000 3, square feet, fully equipped with blaze instruments. We have a GMP facility for making cells, for producing, producing cells for patients. Not quite complete yet, but working hard on that. We have a new vivarium for doing the experiments we need in animals. We have a staff of about 38 at this point. We're planning to increase to about 70 in the next couple of years. And we're getting external funding, mostly from the NIH. We're up around 2 million now. We hope to get up to about 6 million your future. So the goal of our institute, first of all, to do basic research on adult stem progenitor cells. Embryonic stem cells, fascinating topics of research, we're not doing those. We're trying to learn how adult stem cells work. It turns out they're fascinating cells. Every time we think we understand them, they fool us again. We're going by steps and figuring out how these cells work. But the major lesson we're learning is these cells have a way to go to injured tissues in the body and heal them dramatically. And we see this time and time again. Now, I said we don't deal with human embryonic stem cells because we're too busy what we're doing. These are cells we obtain from patient, uh, patient or healthy volunteers. And I said they have this amazing ability to heal the body. So, uh, our targets. We're trying to do the basic research. At the same time, we're looking for the patients with the diseases. Their near-term targets here are diabetes, their deep cartilage injuries, the blindness from chemical injuries to the eye. And while we go after these targets, we're actually going after heart disease also, Dr. Wilson said. In his way, we're using a slightly different approach, stroke and some cancers. So, uh, if we think about this, though, and really fits with the previous speakers talk about this, we really can't talk about just research in our own laboratories. We have to think of moving from the laboratory to the clinical patient. And that takes funding, huge amounts of funding, in the order of half a billion dollars or more per therapy. There's no way to go. On. So what we've done, and we've done in the past, is work through companies. So a biotech company called Repair Technologies moved to Austin from California, the state where things are going to happen in a couple of days, to Austin, set up their activities there. 
They have that licensing right to some of our patents for treating patients with diabetes. And we just started another company with the help of Barry Berkowitz, who's here, a friend of mine, called Temple Therapeutics, which we're going to have there. Uh, he's getting uh, that company going to get licensing rights again, has now option rights to plan for using other cells, other cells, or other proteins we're making for different diseases. In just a fact of life, we have to begin thinking immediately when we think about clinical trials to new companies, new jobs in Texas, the treatment of patients. So uh, the general strategy. Dr. Wilson touched on this. It's a very simple idea. To isolate stem cells from the patient. We're going for bone marrow. It makes a teaspoon of the bone marrow. Very easy to get. To make 100 million cells or a billion cells in a matter of a couple of weeks. So the idea is to make more of those cells the patient cell membranes or herself. Take them back to the patient after you've grown cell in the laboratory to speed up this process of repair. Very simple concept. It seemed almost too simple. That would seem to be that's what we're working for in the laboratory time and time again. So let me uh, describe. The first clinical trial of these cells, I think it occurred a little bit ahead of the one that Dr. Wilson was part of the heart disease. This is a trial which was prompted by working in our own laboratory in Philadelphia at that time, working with animal stem cells from bone marrow. It's so complicated. The children like this are seen left. This child actually is about five years old. She can't sit up yet, can't walk, because she has extremely, she has extremely brittle, brittle bones. The trial was set up beginning in 2001, for the have, was to take bone marrow from this normal cell. First, we take it to the child, wipe the bone marrow, wipe out the bone marrow, which itself is a dangerous procedure. Give the child bone marrow from the normal sibling, or donor is matched, to set up the next stage. The second stage was then to take bone marrow from the same donor, make the stem cell, and give back to the child. And you have to do that complicated thing because the child has a genetic defect which causes the bone to grow. Would be good enough to take stem cells from the child and get the normal stem cells. Complicated. But the results were these. The children were not cured, but four out of the five stopped growing. They now began to grow again. Four out of the five were able to sit up for the first time in years by themselves. A little help, they were able to stand and support their good walk. Not cured. An amazing result the children of the parents. So, in that trial, we kind of opened the field for using these adult stem cells for bone marrow. There are now over 150 reports of trials in patients. Now, uh, some complex questions I have before the session here. Can you prove the stem cells are off in the future somewhere? It will be years before the beginning of the patients. The answer is you heard from Dr. Wilson, as you hear from this, so this is what I'm going to talk about now is no, they've begun giving the patients, the patients began receiving these cells over 10 years ago. There are over 5,000 patients being treated in clinical centers around the world with adult stem cells. The results are encouraging. They can be treated for diseases like heart disease, or stroke, or diabetes, many other diseases. Now, at the time though, was sort of irrational enthusiasm. We're not quite sure that the patient gets better. It's only because of the cells. Many of these trials need redoing carefully. If you're more careful about many of them, be sure what we can do. This is what really works for this stuff. But we're in this game, okay? We want to be among the first in Central Texas. And best of, most of all, we want to be the best in you know, this one. And that's really what our laboratory is dedicated to. So let me give you just three or four examples of the kinds of things we see in the laboratory. Which open the door with them to treat patients. This experiment done by Robert Rome Wally, a superb scientist in group, to begin with mice that are diabetic. To give those mice, human, not mouse, adult stem cells. And you measure things like you do with diabetic patients, blood sugar. You see the dotted line here, those are the controls, you see no cells. The blood sugar goes up to very high levels mice begin to die with time. You give human cells, back here at day, day 10 and day 17, 
blood sugar is low. It's amazing what's up. I had Dr. Rico back three times to repeat these experiments, just to be sure. And it's there, it's true. In fact, my little laboratories now for three the same result. Diabetic mice, give that all stem cells, the mice get better. So, what's the consequence? Well, our goal, of course, is to treat patients with diabetes. Millions of patients. Type 1 diabetes is special in a way, even type 2, but more than perhaps type 2 diabetes. Quite sure. We're on the brink of this. And that's the company with our technologies to pursue this in patients. I hope we get it here in Boston sometimes. Um, another example. Yes, a brief book, if you will. Maybe we've seen the laboratory, which we find amazing even now. Again, one experiment back in Long Wall Produced myocardial infarction of mice. It's like a Wilson infarction. Tile, a major coronary artery. You look here at the bottom, you have the full mice you come back in three weeks, you cut the heart at the bottom of the top, pretty much like a salami. What you'll see is instead of heart muscle, you'll see a thin layer of scar tissue. There's no muscle there, you can't contract. So looking through the bottom and the top of the heart, this shows a few sections, mostly the heart muscle that reflects by the scar tissue. Bottom row is the same kind of mice that we see human MSC. They're messed up as a kind of steps. Cold steps. You see the perfect cure, but much more muscle. There's this big mound here. So what the cells have done is stop the heart muscle from degenerating and get the muscle wrong. So what's the equation? Administering these cells, or perhaps they're into something else. Factors that cells produce, produce these kinds of things, to treat patients with myocardial infarction. So there are, as you may know, very good therapies for those six hours after you have a myocardial infarction. But these living drugs will call it bleeding and stroke no problems after six hours. Dr. Lee's results say we can take either the cells or protein the cells made and give them those same patients maybe the next day. Cardiologists say we'll be amazing. We'll use mice, open the blue. 